Coming up on today's Airborne, the European Aviation Safety Agency, EASA, grants an STC for diesel-powered archers. Textron Airlines Scorpion ISR Strike Aircraft reaches 50 test flight hours. And Pilatus achieves record results in 2013. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. As we were wrapping up today's episode of Airborne, our newsroom got a late breaking story. Jim Campbell is here to report. Thanks, Ashley, and hi, folks. And boy, do we have some breaking news. Remember that rumor a couple of weeks ago about how Facebook might be acquiring Titan Aerospace, the up and coming UAV research operation headed by Vern Rayburn? Well, that rumor is false. And the main reason the rumor is false is, well, Google bought them instead. Undisclosed amount, the company will stay in New Mexico, uh, and Vern is still part of the operation and will be running it for the foreseeable future. But get this, they're working hard at this point to get the Solera 50, their primary research vehicle, into the air and into flight tests this summer. It'll be cruising at 65,000 feet, solar powered, so charges up its batteries and does its things during the day and uses the batteries at night. This thing can be used for all kinds of purposes, whether it be for telecommunications, whether it be mapping, whether it be surveillance, there's all kinds of uh, farming applications, but it is the first of a new generation of potential UAVs, something they call Atmosats, a vehicle that flies at very high altitude and can be recovered and put back into position in a matter of days, unlike a low earth orbiting satellite and things of that nature. This is a big deal for Titan, Having Google behind them means a tremendous amount of operating capital and even more from the standpoint of the horsepower of being a Google-owned company. We'll have more to report about this shortly, but suffice it to say that Vern Rayburn has done it again. It's going to be a very interesting company to watch for the future. In the meantime, for Aero News, Airborne and Aero TV, this is Jim Campbell. The European Aviation Safety Agency, EASA, has granted an STC to Piper Aircraft and the Continental Motors Group for the installation of the Centurion 2.0S diesel engine aboard a Piper Archer aircraft. Ground and flight test on the Piper Archer, powered by a Centurion 155 horsepower Jet A compression ignition engine, were conducted from Technify's airport facility at Altenburg, Germany. The Centurion 2.0S engine is certified to use both Jet A and diesel fuel and with the two fuels in any mixture ratio. If looks could kill and a name means anything, you've got to love the Textron Airland Scorpion. The company says it has now completed 50 hours of flight time since the start of flight testing. The objective of recent flights had been to gather data about the aircraft's performance at various speeds, altitudes, and climb rates as well as to assess the responsiveness of Scorpion's avionics, flight controls, and landing system. The pilot reports that the aircraft is nimble and agile with plenty of power, including single-engine climbs. The Scorpion has very good low-speed characteristics, it handles well in the landing pattern, and is stable when in the landing configuration. Test pilot Dan Henson added, quote, the flight control systems are powered by dual hydraulic systems based on the Citation X business jet and have performed flawlessly. In the event of a loss of both hydraulic systems, the airplane can be flown in manual reversion. End quote. The Scorpion testing program remains on pace to complete 300 to 400 test hours this year, which will require about 150 flights. You're watching Airborne. We'll be back with more news at the future of the day. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States. But you can benefit from ADS-B today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Over the past two decades, no resource has compiled as much expert valued information about the sport plane world than the Sport Plane Resource Guide. Over 1,500 pages, hundreds of aircraft, dozens of how-tos and directories. 
All this and more will be coming to the sport aviation world soon with the new all-electronic and updatable Sport Plane Resource Guide for your iPad, iPhone, Kindle, tablet, PC, or other electronic devices. Get your order in now at www.sportplane.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. For the first time in its 75-year history, Pilatus Aircraft has surpassed the $1.147 billion mark in terms of sales. Pilatus managed to boost 2013 sales by over 70%. Major orders worth about $2.3 billion were received in 2012. This is reflected in the sales reported in the Pilatus Government Aviation Business Unit, which makes up some two-thirds of the record results of 2013. As is in the past two years, Pilatus ranked second with the PC-12 and G in the single-engine turboprop category. In 2013, 42 of the 65 PC-12 NGs went to customers in the U.S. The economic upturn in China and the gradual opening up of Chinese airspace to civil aviation prompted Pilatus to set up a joint venture company for that growing market. Pilatus also unveiled the PC-24 business jet project for the first time at eBay's 2013, which was in Geneva and it received an enthusiastic reception from both the general public and specialists alike. If aircraft sales are still in the struggling mode, it seems Pilatus didn't get the memo. And now it's time for our Aero Video of the Week. The movie Top Gun started our love affair with the Navy F-14 Tomcat. This great fighter is no longer in active service, but it's not forgotten. Search F-14 Tomcat VF-101 demo on YouTube. Flight Design has announced the last major component and supplier to be selected for their all-new four-seat aircraft. The avionics suite for the $250,000 composite aircraft will be provided by Garmin and is named the Flight Design Vision Touch by Garmin. The newly developed Garmin G3X Touch system has two 10.6-inch glass displays. The system doesn't have a TSO approval of its own, but it will be certified together with the airframe, allowing for a lower price and greater flexibility for future system enhancements and upgrades. The Flight Design Vision Touch Suite by Garmin provides the capability of synthetic vision combined with a Garmin GTN 750 GPS Navcom, Garmin GNC 255 Navcom, Garmin GMC 305 Autopilot, and a Garmin GMA 350 Audio Panel. The C4 development process is well underway with certification anticipated before the middle of 2015. You're watching Airborne. We'll be back after these messages. Redbird Skyport is a multifaceted aviation laboratory charged with developing innovative solutions to the issues facing the industry. It started out as a vision for a laboratory where we could objectively measure the systems and the processes that we were developing. Being able to put some objective measures behind the anecdotal evidence that we have about the value of motion and the application of this technology is very, very important because until we can objectively measure it and play that data back, we can't design training systems that make the best use of it. For more information about Redbird Flight Simulations, as well as Redbird's new Skyport, visit www.redbirdflightsimulations.com or www.redbirdskyport.com. Welcome back. Well, it looks like the TSA is at it again. A woman in a wheelchair who suffered from a stroke 10 years ago and who was carrying an expired driver's license was denied boarding on a flight from Los Angeles to Phoenix because she was unable to speak her own name. 
The New York Post reports that Heidi Wright had arrived at the airport with her sister Sherry. She was stopped at a security checkpoint by a TSA agent because her driver's license was expired. Sherry Wright said that the agent insisted that Heidi speak. Wright said she showed the agent her sister's ID, social security card, and DMV papers, but the agent would not let her through security unless she could speak. Sherry Wright said the TSA agent was rude and insensitive. TSA spokesman Miko Melendez said that the incident, quote, could have been handled differently by the TSA and it probably could have been handled differently by the family. And hopefully moving forward, the family won't have the problem again because they know about the programs we have in place, end quote. Any airplane home builder just loves it when it's finally possible to sit in the cockpit of their project. And x Aerospace is no different. They reported the x Link's Mark I cockpit has been delivered. Atomworks engineers, along with x engineers, performed several successful pressure tests before it was packed and shipped to x -Corps. The cockpit is the principal major sub-assembly that x needs to begin assembly of the Lynx suborbital space plane. Quote, the successful pressure testing of the Lynx cockpit and its delivery is a major milestone for us, said x founder and CEO Jeff Greeson. This will enable us to accelerate towards integration, ground testing, and first flight over the rest of the year. End quote. Well, that's our program. Remember to get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And please join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition of Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.